Today we're driving the 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Now this is about a foot shorter than the L, the long wheelbase. We get a 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 that makes 293 horsepower, 260 pound-feet of torque. We have an eight-speed ZF automatic transmission. This is a limited four-wheel drive, which means it starts around $45,000 we have a few options on this Grand Cherokee. We'll include that in detail in the description. Let's walk you around this thing. Let's start with the interior. You can see we remote started it. That's really nice in these cold winter months because it will preheat the cabin. It'll turn your climate control to max. And there's also a setting to enable the heated steering wheel and heated seats so that when you get in, it is nice and cozy. All you have to do to start up the vehicle after remote starting it is just hit the start stop button right here and you are ready to go. So we have a whole new design throughout this interior. We drove the Grand Wagoneer a few weeks ago and I do see some similarities. Lots of physical controls, lots of actual buttons, which I really appreciate. Lots of buttons here for the climate control. You don't have to go into the touchscreen to control everything. Uh, you can control it through the touchscreen, but you don't have to. Unfortunately, we do get quite a bit of gloss black plastic in the center console area and some harder cheaper plastics here in this limited trim this jeep only has 1400 miles on it and it's already looking a little bit scratched up and just kind of not so great underneath this fold back cover we have wireless charging and a bunch of usb ports you can see we've got our rotary shifter here which i actually really like really nice reverse 360 cameras nice option on this Grand Cherokee. A few different drive modes, sand, snow, auto, and sport. And lots of storage and space throughout this cabin. We have a nice panoramic sunroof. You can also see we've got our rear seat entertainment screen spec in this car. We'll show you guys those once we head into the back seat. And we get this passenger screen. You can see it's an angled display, so only the passenger can see it. You can see whatever's plugged into the HDMI port. So you can control the rear entertainment. Uh, pretty nice screen, and it is very cool that it's an angle display. The driver can't really see it. You can turn that off, on and off with this button right here. Overall, I do really like the functionality and design of this interior. It is going to feel more upscale in some higher trims, though. Uh, this is still just the limited trim. One thing I'm not a big fan of, though, is this center digital display. It's digital, you can make it look however you want it to, and it just doesn't quite deliver and stay consistent with the design of the rest of this Jeep. I feel like it just, the screens look a little bit cheap. Um, the design of the gauge cluster and the tachometer just isn't very nice. Uh, it is a responsive screen though. Sometimes switching between menus in the past with Jeep screens has been really slow and sluggish. That's not the case here. So between that and the gloss black center console here. Those are really my only complaints with this interior. This new Uconnect display is super responsive, very quick, pretty well organized too. Your CarPlay integrates beautifully. It's a nice display at angles too, retains contrast really well. You've got a few settings that you can customize in the deep menus here, but for the most part, you have physical buttons for everything. You can turn off stop start, your lane keep assist, traction control, your parking sensors. There's a button for your hazard lights. We have a heated steering wheel, heated and cooled seats. All easy to access physical controls, and there's also some quick access stuff here that you can set for your home screen if you want to. We're just gonna leave it on CarPlay. All right, let's hop in the back seat and show you what the rear seat room looks like in this Grand Cherokee. So pretty spacious back here. I'm five foot 10. That driver's seat is set to my driving position. I have lots of legroom back here and look at all these, these entertainment options with Amazon Fire TV. We can watch Netflix, Amazon Prime, YouTube, HBO Max, Disney Plus, the whole lot. And that's really nice. You can plug in headphones. You've got an HDMI port. You can play your Xbox back here too if you wanted to. We've got an armrest, a couple of cup holders. We have privacy shades specced in this Grand Cherokee. Couple of heated seat buttons down there. Come on, there we go. And a bunch of USB ports, 115 volt AC outlet. No rear climate controls, but uh, you do get your vents and a little bit of place here to store your phone, which is very nice. 
Let's check out the trunk. Tailgate lifts pretty quickly. Lots of storage space back here. We even get, check it out, joy of joys, a full-size spare tire. Don't see them that in a lot of vehicles these days. Pretty basic back here otherwise. Of course, no third row, this not being the long wheelbase. Here's your button to close the rear tailgate. And again, closes nice and fast. Here's what the key fob looks like. You've got a bunch of different buttons. Double press to remote start and lift or close the tailgate. Unlock and lock. Nice key fob, nicely weighted. Feels pretty good in hand. Oh, and one thing I did forget to show you guys in the back seat. These are adjustable, so you can adjust the backrest. You can lean back a little bit if you want to. Here's where everything looks like folded down. You get a nice flat loading surface and everything folds up pretty easily. Though you do have to set the backrest back to where it was previously. Behind this fuel door, you have a quick fill cap right here, which is super convenient. Adds up over time. This Grand Cherokee has 20 inch wheels which I think look pretty good. Can't go wrong with a classic fat five spoke. I do like this front end design. I feel like they didn't square off the lower part of the grill as much and it looks less like the Grand Wagoneer or Wagoneer. Um, this is a nice evolution of the Grand Cherokee design in my opinion. A little bit lighter than the previous version too. All right, let's hop inside and we'll take this thing for a drive. We have an Alpine sound system. Sounds pretty nice too. We'll do a little sound system test at the end of this video. And I do like this rotary shifter. Super easy to use. Steering is light. This V6 is very smooth. Pretty torquey and powerful too. They've used this in just about everything over the years. It's rated for 19 miles to the gallon in the city, 26 on the highway. We do get paddle shifters for this ZF 8-speed automatic. You put it into sport mode. And that's pretty responsive too, not bad. a ton of power from this V6, but it is definitely adequate. The responsiveness is nice from this 8-speed automatic, and that does help kind of get you up and going as quickly as you need to. This also comes with a 5.7 liter V8. Haven't driven one of those, but I imagine that is a pretty desirable option. In sport mode, it's holding our revs a little bit higher. It's downshifting under hard braking giving us just a little bit more of a sporty driving experience. Throttle response is also improved. Let's see how this handles. No air suspension in this Grand Cherokee. We just have coil springs. Very little body roll. This being just the limited though, I felt like this is a pretty nice Jeep to drive all week. Super easy to live with. Lots of functionality and uh, user-friendly controls in this interior. Drives well enough, kind of how you would expect with this powertrain. No real surprises or major complaints with the way this thing is on the road. Ride quality is nice. There's a little bit more noise over bumps and suspension impact with these 20-inch uh, wheels, but that's to be expected. We have adaptive cruise control. All I have to do is press the button to the far left to enable that. You skip five mile an hour increments super easily by holding the up or down buttons. Um, a very easy system to use. You can turn on active lane management with that button right there and it'll kind of just bounce you between the lines. It's not necessarily the best lane centering system. 
It will pass slower vehicles pretty quickly though. As soon as you turn your turn signal on, it'll begin to accelerate. And even at highway speeds, we have a pretty quiet cabin with the sunshade open. We also get a digital rear view mirror, which is nice. If you have that sunshade pulled all the way back, it does reduce the visibility a little bit, but you can kind of fix that by closing half of it very nice highway cruiser super comfortable pretty quiet if I had any complaints I think the throttle response is a little bit over eager uh, I would like to see that muted just a tad this is just a standard passenger vehicle and it can be sometimes difficult to accelerate smoothly when just that top of the accelerator pedal gives you so much acceleration and a really aggressive downshift. This limited trim is probably just about enough for what most people need. Luckily, if you want more luxury features or more comfort, there are higher trims. And if you want an off-road focused Grand Cherokee, which is probably what I would swing for, they have the Trailhawk and the Trailhawk 4xe, which is coming out later this spring or summer. That'll have about 25 miles of plug-in hybrid driving range, which is pretty cool. So how can we sum up the Grand Cherokee Limited? Well, I think overall this is a pretty nice Jeep. Um, great road manners, really nice implementation of technology. I love that they've kept all these physical controls and buttons. It's an attractive looking SUV. Um, I think kind of one of the best American options for a luxury SUV. And again, you can get the higher trims and really spec these things out. But for what it is, this Limited is a nice option for the more budget conscious. And depending on the options that you select, uh, you can save a little bit of money here off of the t as tested price of this Jeep. $45,000 starting price. This offers a pretty nice blend of off-road capability, luxury, tech, comfort, and value. Personally, I'd be very curious to test out the Trailhawk and the Trailhawk 4xe when those come out. That's kind of a little bit more my style, but I can understand how it would be interesting to see what this more mainstream limited Jeep is like to drive. So hopefully we've given you guys an idea of what that's like this week. Let's park this, we'll walk you around one more time, and then we'll do a sound system test with this standard Alpine audio system. See what the tail lights look like there. All right. Well, thanks for watching. If you are not interested in listening to the sound system test, we'll be posting some more videos on this on the Winding Road Magazine YouTube channel and the Daily Motor YouTube channel. But if you do want to stay tuned for the sound system, we'll get started right away with it. So we've got a wired connection with CarPlay that shows up pretty much immediately. Volume controls, tune controls. Off we go. We have track and volume controls also behind the steering wheel in typical Jeep fashion. in a little bonus zero to 60 here.
but you can also spec these with the Macintosh premium audio. Super impressive sound system, but as a bass audio system, this is very nice. It's clear, excellent bass. I'd be happy with this for around $40,000, $50,000. I think that's going to wrap this video up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.